rock and rolling. So, how, why is a submarine like this so important to this type of research? Well, I think the key with this research is to get uh, scientists to be able to collaborate, to get the public engaged in what's going on, to uh, be able to uh, bring attention. And a manned sub is a, is a magnet for, for both media, but it's also a great uh, platform for researchers to be able to see the same environment that the lionfish is living in, discuss and, and hypothesize and test theories. And so it's, it's a completely unique platform that's of great value. Especially this, this particular submersible because it, it is such a, a, it's such a big space underwater for, for a team of five. Yes. Uh, and, and as they were saying, is, is, is to be able to ha scientists to be able to have the conversation at depth when they're in front of whatever it is. Exactly. And because of the length, you can have a camera in there taking an image of both scientists working as well as doing interviews at depth, which is very unique. You don't get that on other submersibles that don't have the ability to take five people at once at depth. As you take some, I think in my, in my anecdotal experience, I think a lot of times scientists, they, they get stuck, you know, in a, in a beautiful building like this, but they get stuck in the building. You take them out of the field. What are, what are some of the most interesting encounters you've had with scientists when they actually are seeing the, the subject of their research? Well, I think, and maybe I, I'd hypothesize, most scientists get involved in marine biology because they want to go in the ocean. They're interested in the ocean, and they start with scuba diving and they, they don't have the opportunities. They get farther into it. The only resources they have are uh, remote sensing vehicles, uh, remotely operated vehicles, and I think most of them got in it because they, they have a passion for it. And being able to go down there in the environment, and you see the excitement, it's like a little kid in a candy store. All of a sudden they see what they've been studying and it's not a video representation on a screen on a small robot at the end of the tether. They're actually there. Somebody, somebody made the, in the presentation today said it would be like look at, when you're using an ROV, it's like looking through a pipe. And, and some of that, to give ROVs credit, some of that is because their cameras are old and they're, and they're smaller and they have to be small to be on a small ROV. Uh, but even if it was perfect representation, and, and one of the analogies is even if I gave you a 3D representation of the Grand Canyon and piped in the smell of sage grass, it won't replace being there knowing that you're there and that being able to hear and see and feel the entire environment is something you can't duplicate. You can't do a digital representation of the Acropolis. You have to go to it. The other, the other um, analogy that was made today I found very interesting is to make these things like John Deere tractors. Mm -hmm. Where are we in, in submersible technology? Are we, are we, could, could they, or how far are we from, from mass production of submersible? The issue isn't mass production or technology. The issue is business model. The issue is system economics. And the, still, the essential problem with submersibles is they're based on a mothership. And if you're going to be based on a mothership and, and all the costs associated with that, that ends up making it hard to become less expensive. So it's. Uh, there's a John Deere, we could make a John Deere Motors vehicle, but if you stored it in downtown Chicago and every time you wanted to uh, use it in the field, you had to transport it out on a flatbed truck, it wouldn't get used much. And so what we're working at OceanGate is to come up with cheaper ways to deliver the sub in a safe fashion, as well as multiple revenue streams. So get multiple customers, whether it's researchers, whether it is film, uh, whether it's tourism or commercial interests in oil and gas and mining, You've got to have multiple revenue sources and you've got to be able to drop your cost. But that's our goal. Is it, we, we should have as many subs out there as we have Land Rovers. You're trying to explore something that's you know, 100 times larger than Africa and doing it with uh, a grand total of 100 subs, research subs on planet Earth. Where do you feel, we, if you're looking at ocean exploration, where are we? Is this a new era of ocean exploration? Where are we in, in opening that frontier up? Yes, I think we made great progress in the 60s and 70s on manned um, ocean exploration, and it died off for a lot of um, explainable but illogical reasons. Um, I think we are at the dawn because people are appreciative. They understand the importance of the ocean for, for climate change. They understand the importance of the ocean as far as fisheries management and that there is the technology to have more manned subs. So I believe that for the next 50, 100 years, this is what mankind will do. It will figure out what's going on in the oceans and something we should have been doing for the last 40. But I, the interest is there now and the technology's always been there. Cool, cool. Good enough? Perfect. Yes.